somebody like myself who has been out of the loop of rock and roll for many years, mm -hmm. or into jazz, how would you describe what you're going to do tonight? Is it? I mean, I know that it's since this '77, you've been, you know, more jazz rock. It's yeah. It's a bit like. It's a tricky question, I know. Yeah, no, it's it's okay. <laughs> It's hard to put the finger exactly where the, my present style comes from. It's just a, the years of listening to people that I really was drawn to, you know, from rockabilly to the 60s, you know, Hendrix and um, uh, even Ravi, Ravi Shankar, who twisted everything around for me with the bends. And I applied a lot, a lot of his, not, you know, direct lifts, but the actual technique of bending the G string and and you know, forming melody by bending the string rather than just playing the single note. So a lot goes to, to Ravi Shankar for that. Um, it's also um, Eastern influence, you know, uh, Arabic music. I don't care about politics or anything like that, as long as the song sounds good, I'll play it and, and, and try to, you know, embroider what's there and embellish it and, and try to make it my own. That's, that's really what it is, really. Have plans for a new album yet? And if so, uh, <laughs> is uh, David Torn going to be involved? Is, is David Torn going to be involved in the record? Uh, no, he won't. He won't be. Um, there were some issues with with David, um, which unfortunately prevented. But um, we start in earnest in at the, about the second week in August. Um, so no more fun for me, really, <laughs> for a month. Any idea what is it going to be a departure from your uh, more recent work? Yeah, it wouldn't be fair for me to describe it at the moment because it's still very much in the we're dreaming up ideas of how to mo modify existing songs. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to put some original stuff in it. You know, as, as far as the up stuff, you know, the danceable stuff and stuff with groove. Um, there is a dilemma about whether to make a, a double album of the tear jerky stuff one side and the rock and roll on the other but all will be revealed I think by the the end of maybe August or September. And you see, I mean, you see, okay, okay, that's how I'm about to rephrase this and um, you do an album, do you foresee yourself working with the same group for a long time? I mean, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh yeah, you, you build up a, a camaraderie and uh, I think anybody will tell you that the band is better than pick up players any day of the week. You, you become uh, you become a soap opera. You become um, a family, really, and it's you, you share travel griefs and misery and all the rest of it, internet, <laughs> and all the rest of it. So it's great to have that, you know. Actually, we've been together for almost 18 months now. I think. What is your philosophy in playing music? A philosophy? Well, it's it's. <laughs> I don't know why I wanted to do it. Um, what makes anybody want to? you know, threaten their life by racing on a motorcycle, I don't know, or climb a, <laughs> or go single-handedly on a boat. I can't think of anything more miserable myself, but something drives us to do this. And it was the lack of, I suppose, satisfaction of listening and just absorbing what was played on a record and wanting to get on board and find out, you know, and then interpret what I heard. That's, that's really what it is. It becomes fun to play and then when other people start to enjoy what you're doing then it becomes very enjoyable I can tell you. <laughs> Red King Jazz Variations Radio in the US. Um, you're one of the earliest guitar players that I've seen utilize tapping technique. Was there an individual, a guitar player that inspired you to do that or was that just something you discovered fooling around? Right. You're talking about the, the, the ball of the finger, yeah. I've got a book at home called the, the, the Touch System by Ben Webster and it goes back to about 1946. <laughs> so nothing's new. Uh, and he actually used a, a lot more subtleties in his, uh, his application of, of the way. He actually f uh, varied the angle of his fingers to, to bring out the harmonics and play variable chords, uh, multi chords as well as just single note flurries of, of bravado, you know, that he was actually playing chords like a piano player by pressing directly down with the ball of the finger. Fantastic. Never heard him, but it sounded good in print. <laughs> Hi, 
Jeff, I'd like to get your thoughts maybe um, with the benefit of hindsight on Blow by Blow and Wired, which were landmark albums of the sort of jazz, rock, fusion. How do those albums uh, seem to you after three whatever years? How do they seem? Yeah, how do they sound to you and what's your... Uh, it's funny how you look back, it's like an old photo album where you think, oh, oh sorry about the hair, you know. <laughs> or the trousers or whatever it would be. Um, but the Jan stuff still stands up, head and shoulders, I think, you know, because of Jan Hammer and his European, just his ears, you know, are so incredible, and his technique. Um, I, l I lost George Martin along the way in the quest to try to find a more aggressive spin on the type of music that I was influenced with by, which was Mahavishnu Orchestra, um, John, you know, John McLaughlin and all those great players that um, what I wanted to do was join up with Jan and try to make a more, slightly more accessible version of that really. Uh, I say accessible, I mean that I was incapable of doing what John did, you know, <laughs> so it was a watered down version but I, I did have fun doing that. And it gave it gave me a year of great fun with Jan and his band, you know. Jeff, are you excited that you're going to be in the upcoming version of Guitar Hero 5? <laughs> <laughs> Let's just see how excited I am when the uh, check comes in. <laughs> no, I, I think it's great, you know. And what, what amazes me is that um, the electric guitar is still so popular and uh, didn't fall down the hole the black hole of nothingness and could have easily done that. When you're playing there's always that feeling of uh, spur of the moment, being spontaneous uh, playing, you know. I was wondering how much of that is, uh, is something that, that you just do because you think of it. It's, it's, um, a, it's a form of musical Tourette's, I think. <laughs> In, it's involuntary spasm. Um, I think it's probably a form of insanity, to be quite honest. I think, you know, I'm not going to hog the insanity thing. I think most people are, who play are quite nuts anyway. <laughs> you know, you become obsessed about um, sounds and positioning and note, notation and chords and we, we just get drawn into it. But um, I try not to be boring and that's all it is really. And I make terrible mistakes, but when there's a result, there is a, a result. Um, if it's a great mistake, I, I, I put it in there and and then, <laughs> and, it, and then expand it. We're going to go with the last question, Sylvain. Um, you do two different, very different things with your hands. You play guitar and you restore yeah. vintage cars. Isn't one dangerous for the other? <laughs> yeah, of course it is, yeah. Um, so? It, it's, it's a bit like a tightrope walker, I suppose. They, if they thought about falling, they'd never do it. Um, I do wear eye protection now, though. <laughs> I've had three visits to the eye clinic, and it's much better to wear the glasses. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, thanks for that. Um, I do ludicrous things. I was under a car once which didn't have jack stands to secure, the, the, and the jack leaked, and the car just came down on top of my head. I got out just in time, but... Uh, Thanks for the warning, I'll remember to buy myself some protective. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff, you're also well known for doing collaborations. You worked with uh, Morrissey in his last album. I don't know if you have ever thought of doing something new. With, with, that, with, 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 with Morrissey. Morrissey? Yeah, that was one of the, th those funny evenings where nothing happened and then I was on, all of a sudden on 15 other people's albums <laughs> just by a, a couple of Jack Daniels, uh, you know, and a promise. Um, but Morris I've always found fascinating and he's a close friend of um, Chrissy Hind who I'm also for, very close to and uh, when you're close like that things happen and the next morning I was down there on, on the way to the studio <laughs> no other reason that I like the guy you know I didn't have a clue about the song um, but I think he plus he's a vegetarian <laughs> Thanks. Merci beaucoup. thank you very much everyone thank you